And so I, I was like, calm down. They're just pancakes. <laughs> you know. Hey, Buju. Welcome back to Buju Nana Buju, a podcast about Ojibwe language and culture, huh, sweetie? <laughs> That's right, baby doll. You tell them. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and the very talented Natasha. Ikadon buju ni wini mushane. Say hello, my sweetheart. Hello, my sweetheart. Buju kakira awiya. Hello, everybody. And welcome back to the show. Hey, sweetie, I was thinking today maybe we should uh, read Little Cutie, A Teddy Bear's Vision Quest. Michael's book? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I think that's a great idea. All right. Tonight we're just going to... Michael Lyons wrote a book called Little Cutie, A Teddy Bear's Vision Quest. And oh, wow, it's just a cute book. So, I don't know. Do you want to help me with this, sweetie? Maybe we can do some of the uh, voices in that. Well, sure. All right. So Little Cutie is a story of a teddy bear that goes on a vision quest. And you might ask yourself, well, what's a vision quest, huh? <laughs> yeah, what is a vision quest? A vision quest is like going on a journey looking for a vision. You're looking for answers. Looking, f- in, in little cutie's case, he's looking, he doesn't know where he belongs. And he gets a whole lot of advice. And then eventually meets Gitchimanadu. So, let's just take a look at this. Little cutie. There's a little red and white teddy bear. And um, it's called A Teddy Bear's Vision Quest by Michael Lyons. Little cutie. A Teddy Bear's Vision Quest by Michael Lyons. 2013. Hey, Michael, this book is 10 years old already. Is it really? (laughs) Yeah. All right, here we go. Once upon a reservation in northern Minnesota, there lived a ragged red and white teddy bear. Little cutie stayed in a house nestled deep within a jack pine forest with a family and a young girl named Aubrey. Things had been terrific for years. Aubrey and little cutie were inseparable best friends. They spent many long afternoons together playing dress up and stuffed animal parade. And there she is. There's there's Aubrey. Oh, she's just cute. <laughs> yeah, she kind of reminds me of you. And she's got a little cutie there and they're playing stuffed animal parade. <laughs> yeah. But lately, little cutie had noticed how Aubrey seemed preoccupied with playing with her friends, drawing cartoons on the kitchen table, and dancing in front of the mirror to music played really loud. To make matters worse, the adults had been talking about the two of them. Little cutie was sitting on the floor next to the couch when the big male human said to his wife, Isn't Aubrey getting a little old for stuffed animals? It was painfully clear to the small, tattered bear. He had worn out his welcome. With a heavy heart and a lump in his throat, little cutie sat at the back bedroom window and sighed. Oh, wow, look at that. (laughs) Oh, he's just sad. Yeah, he's at the back bedroom window sighing. Suddenly, a jitamu appeared before little cutie. What's the matter, little cutie? You don't look yourself, he asked. There's a jitamu. A jitamu is squirrel in Ojibwe. It's Aubrey, little cutie replied. I think she's outgrown me. Are you sure, Niji? The little squirrel said. She doesn't seem like the type to me, but then, what do I know about humans? 
<laughs> Ajunamu furiously scratched behind his right ear for a split second and asked, What are you going to do? I don't know what to do, little cutie replied, but I don't see how I can really stay. What do you think I should do? I'll be honest with you, little cutie. I never understood how you could live with them humans in the first place. I don't let them within 20 feet of me. They've always been good to me, little cutie replied. I couldn't imagine living with anyone else. Ajinamu tilted his head to one side, raised an eyebrow and asked, What about bears? I mean, you are one, aren't you? Are you telling me you've never lived with your own kind? <laughs> Ajinamu is kind of a racist. I guess not. Then there you go, Niji. Ajinamu's eyes lit up with excitement at the idea. You'll go live with the bears at the old res dump. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Ajinamu. That's a pretty big decision, little cutie said. What if I don't like living at a dump? That's a good point. Maybe you should go on what they call a vision quest. What's a vision quest? I'm not exactly sure. But I'll bet you Miggazy knows all about it. They say he's the most traditional of all the eagles. Would you introduce me to him? Ajinamu twitched and exclaimed, Ho, oh, uh, I don't think so, Niji. The only one he trusted less than humans was Miggazy. I'd like to help you, little cutie, but I've got a strict policy of avoiding birds of prey. Ajinamu said, If you want to find them, you'll have to walk down to the lake on your own. Little Cutie lifted the screen off the window and carefully made his way down the side of a nearby birch tree. He took one long and possibly last look at the only home he had ever known. Wiping away a solitary tear from his black felt eye, Little Cutie turned to Ajitamu and said, Thanks, Niji. Hang in there, Little Cutie. You'll work it out, Ajitamu replied and quickly darted away. Oh, wow. Uh. Okay, cool. Let's stop there for now. <laughs> um... Let's call that chapter one of Little Cutie. <laughs> yeah, okay. There you have it, folks. Chapter one, Little Cutie, A Teddy Bear's Vision Quest. Tune in tomorrow and we'll pick it up from there. We'll pick it up and you can learn more about Little Cutie, A Teddy Bear's Vision Quest by Michael Lyons, the rock star cartoonist. Oh, buddy. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> All right. Miigwech ka bizendawiyag. Thank you for listening. I am Nana Bushu. This over here is Natasha. Miigwech ka kira awiya. Thank you, everybody. And I will see you again. Gigawaba min. Mirawa. Hoa. Hoa. All right.